joining me once again. I really appreciate it. If you haven't clicked subscribe already, I'm just going to ask you to click subscribe. In today's video, I'm visiting Riga's Central Market. So let's go. This wonderful market is positioned just in the southeast of the city, right by the riverbanks. To get to it, I must walk past these beautiful flower markets. This is actually Europe's largest market and bazaar. If you can believe it, in this tiny little city of Riga, this central market is Europe's biggest. It consists of four main pavilions, meat, fish, vegetables and dairy pavilions. On this spot, a market of some sort has been trading ever since 1571. The modern market that we're about to see today was built in 1930. Airship hangars left over by the Germans after World War I and the uh, Latvians have now put them to good use. It's quite an amazing thought to think that old German Zeppelins used to be homed in these hangars that you're about to see. I think that's fascinating. The design of these hangars is neoclassical and art deco in a way. Due to the rise of cheap supermarkets that you find all over the world, the market has struggled in recent years and it is now seen as the cheap shopping place in Riga. However, locals and councillors at Riga City have expressed a priority to preserve this wonderful place and hopefully with this video it entices at least one person to go visit it because I think it's definitely worth a visit as you will see. It is strange to think as you look up at the ceiling here how a zeppelin used to sit exactly here. things to do in Riga is visit the central market. This is probably one of the top contenders for European markets. I have to admit, not many things for tourists to buy because unless you've got your own apartment and you're planning on cooking, there isn't really much to buy. Uh, obviously you could possibly buy some fruit to be eating along the way to give you energy. There's some restaurants around the side, certainly worth checking out for a decent value meal. Uh, but just generally sort of check out the atmosphere. Obviously in the morning it's going to be slightly busier than the afternoon, but it's worthy of, worthy of a visit. Hopefully you're still with me as I explore this entire market. The uh, market is 72,300 square meters. That's uh, 778,000 square feet and it can hold up to 3,000 trade stands. Although I get the impression today it wasn't doing that. A little clever design that I wasn't aware of until I started doing research on Riga's market is the fact that running right under us, right this moment, are three tunnels that lead all the way to the river. So effectively, goods can be brought in via the river and then transported underground through the tunnels and then distributed uh, amongst the various hangars of the market. During the, its peak during the old Soviet days, 700 metric tons of goods could be stored underneath the floor in the basements. During the Nazi occupation from 1940 that lasted four years, farmers were not allowed to sell their produce and were forced to supply the German army. Uh, the market only sold limited amounts during those years. If you lived in Riga and you wanted to buy food and goods, from about 1941 onwards, the uh, Latvians effectively had what we know as rationing cards. They were called food cards, which allowed them to purchase a certain number of goods. The uh, market was taken back into Soviet occupation in 1944 when the um, Soviets obviously retook Latvia from the, um, the Nazis. During the 80s, uh, the Latvian Soviet Socialist Republic 
announced that the market would be a cultural heritage site. Once Latvia regained independence in 1991, it was clear that the um, market was in dire condition. So between 1995 and 1998, the um, market was regenerated. And then in that year, 1998, along with Old Riga's town, UNESCO declared a World Heritage Site worthy of uh, saving. The reason being, the market's pavilions are the five of the nine Zeppelin hangars that are remaining in the world. So fairly significant, especially for Zeppelin fans, and that's the real Zeppelin as opposed to the phenomenal band. Obviously not a good place to come if you're a vegan, but if you're a meat eater and you want to buy some fresh meat, it's a pretty good place to come. To get between a couple of the hangars, you had to actually go outside. And I have to admit, I felt a little bit sorry for the people outside because right at this moment, it was about minus one, minus two and they were just sort of going about their business while inside the market was significantly warmer. I presume this is probably a cheaper place to have a stall, but at the same time it was, it was wonderful to walk between the different hangars. And I found as I went through the hangars, the variety of food became a little bit more interesting to me. I'm not really a fan of looking at raw meat. Like most European cities, Riga is a far nicer place to visit in the summer. Uh, you don't have the problem of contending with the frostbite on your nose, the frostbite on your cheeks. Uh, without fail, I came away from this trip with frostbite once again on my nose. One thing that's strikingly obvious as I walk around uh, Latvia and certainly this market, especially in non-tourist season, is the distinct lack of any foreign nationality other than Latvian. I have to admit, if you really want a real Latvian experience, this is a perfect place to come because everyone around you is speaking Latvian, you're surrounded by native Latvians. Uh, it actually is a market that feels like, it, like the country that it's in. It would be very hard for me to show you a market like that in England. Almost impossible, I think. So this market is split into three buildings. One of the buildings is currently under construction. I think they're doing renovations on that. And I think that's where the organic vegetables is going to go because those guys have the misfortune in the winter to be placed outside. Whereas uh, the third building, away from the meat, is cheeses, the place uh, smells of pho. We've got pho, we've got food courts around here. And uh, sweets, but a lot of cheese. And it keeps going. Let's see what else is there. I do admit it, I did get it wrong. There's actually five buildings, as I stated earlier, five old Zeppelin hangars. I just hadn't realized how big this market was at that moment of filming. Going back to what I was saying earlier and how this place feels very Latvian, I have to admit, I love that. I wouldn't want to go to Latvia and to be surrounded by thousands and thousands of tourists, or for example, thousands and thousands of people that aren't originally from there. I can't imagine what it feels like for a lot of people when they now visit Paris and they don't ever meet a single Parisian. People are saying that about London as well because in London when you visit my city a lot of foreigners that come as tourists simply never meet an Englishman or an Englishwoman because they simply do not exist in the capital anymore. Uh, the 2011 census uh, in the UK had um, the native Brit and just the native Brit and that's so Brit basically means Welsh, English, Scottish and Northern Irish as a minority in London. Think about how few English people that would be in London. The statistic in 2011 was 45%. When the new census comes out in 2021 I think people who don't have their ear to the ground or certainly or have their he head in the sand are going to be shocked. I think the number is going to be below 40%. I think it's going to be close to 35%. 
is London really an English capital anymore? It's the capital of England, but it certainly doesn't feel English. And that brings us on to what John Cleese um, was reprimanded for uh, back in 2019. He said that London is no longer an English city. I would be sad if Riga was no longer a Latvian city, but thank God it is. Thank God that everywhere I seem to walk in Latvia, I'm surrounded by good Latvian people. I'm surrounded by people speaking Latvian. I'm able to take in their culture and their customs. At the end of the day, Latvia has had a tumultuous history. It's located on the crossroads between Western and Eastern cultures, and it's very clear that outsiders have, have a significant impact on their footprint in their history. But despite that, Latvian people observe their traditions of the ancestors, their culture is embedded in the Lat Latvian folklore, people don't deny that there's such a thing as a Latvian people. Try telling a social justice warrior that in the UK right now and saying that there's a native indigenous uh, British person. They will claim there isn't, but the reality of course there is. Latvians observe things like summer solstice or the Jani holiday. They are massive song and dance festivals, as well as older traditional crafts and handiwork. Latvians enjoy a lot of music festivals, which you can find in Riga and Sugulda. In a future video, I will be visiting Sugulda. I haven't got there yet, but it's on my to-do list, and I'm literally due to go there any moment. So hopefully, as long as the coronavirus doesn't take me out, so you should see a video from Sugulda, and I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. So please stay tuned and subscribe if you'd like to see that video, because apparently it's a place where there's a number of concerts and festivals. Um, I don't know what it will be like when I visit. I'm going because there's a national park there, and I'm curious to see what that's like. I have to be honest, one of the hardest things about traveling with a camera, I find it a little bit difficult to get those really precious interactions. I know some YouTubers are really amazing at carrying a camera around and continually get those genuine interactions. My experience, certainly in Eastern Europe, people really don't like you pointing a camera at them. So I find that I get my best interactions when I switch the camera off. And um, this is the fourth building. The fourth building is certainly more appealing to myself. There's no death, there's no destruction, it's just beautiful vegetables, fruits. It smells really nice actually. Not as good as the cakes in the next building, so there's four buildings in total in the marketplace with so scattered markets all around and uh, certainly wor worthy of a visit. Going back to those interactions, the interactions I actually have with you guys, the subscribers and the viewers, because I know a lot of people that view these videos don't actually subscribe, 95% of you in fact, I will say I do enjoy every interaction, even the ones that are highly critical of my videos, I'm still learning how to do this. I am but an amateur, but every time I um, release a video, I like to think that I've done something slightly different, I like to think that I've learned something along the way and one of the main reasons that I um, make these uh, mostly travel videos is the fact that I often go to these places and I don't know everything about them when I'm there. I don't have a tour guide showing me around telling me the history. I generally have to read about these places um, before and after I visited and certainly in the um, post edit process which is this moment right here where I'm speaking into the microphone. What I'm generally doing is speaking into the microphone while the video clip plays and just talking and going with the flow. But what I have found, the interactions that I get from you guys when you correct me on things, pronunciation of places, I appreciate that genuinely. Just like a French person or an American person won't be able to pronounce certain places in England, I know that I myself will fail to pronounce correctly certain places around the world, just like anyone. So it's really important that you guys do correct me. I mean no offense when I get the pronunciation wrong, 
and when you can add to the historical information in the comments below. I'm sure it's not only me that appreciates it, I'm sure that someone else uh, who's watching this also appreciates that, those little facts. Uh, so thank you very much. I'm also surprised by how many people do watch these videos. Uh, it is greatly appreciated. Like I say, if you subscribe to this channel, there will be more videos on Latvia and more videos to come from multiple destinations around the world. I haven't quite finished here. This is this was uh, one of my favorite hangers. I think it's probably time that I cut to my live self. Okay, so we've definitely reached the end of the central market and this is the fifth building. Uh, number one was the butchers, number two was closed for refurbishment, so I think that's where the fruits and vegetables will go. Three, we had the sort of bakery things. Four, we had the vegetables. And five, we have smoked fish, but also fish. We go that way, there's uh, fresh fish, or frozen fish, it looks like, but I think also fresh fish. The smell around here is amazing. It's kind of a smoked, smoked salmon, smoked mackerel, you name it, smoked everything. It's uh, smoked kippers, like that smell. And uh, over here, it's, 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 incredibly nice market worth checking out certainly one of Europe's more impressive markets this gives the markets in Barcelona a run for their money uh, I'm trying to think this even gives uh, Smithfield market in London a run for its money uh, it's certainly more accessible than London's markets really nice market I can see why the locals would want to avoid the supermarkets and come here and do their shopping because everything's all under one well five roofs in fact and it's just on the other side of the central railway station uh, not a bad place to visit. Thank you.